We've got one week left in regular season. We work since the barn tour to get this. You've got to play every possession as if it's your last. On the right side of the court. Yeah, they got, they got everybody to step up. She's got to take away that jumper. Like, this is good defense. See, she downs her. Hand off the cross screen. Get through the cross screen. Hand off the ball screen. Skip pass. Working on just, again, getting the hand up. Don't let them go middle. Keep them in front. Don't let them drive. They are really working on us getting better. Like, there's some things we're doing that are some things we'll obviously see against D. So I expect us to come and focus and get better. As I see, she's here. I'm going to shadow to the post as she's playing post defense. Understand that they will shoot threes in transition. Personally, I just I want to play the best defense I can. I'm just trying to box out and grab rebounds. That's that's my main focus for this game. One of my mentors, Dick Bernhardt, who coached my coach Harry Pareda in high school at Montenegro Bonner, he said a lot of coaches, you know, spend a lot of time on their opponents and they really got to focus on themselves. So. I've gotten away from being overly sophisticated on scouts and really kind of just keeping it to like just tendencies and, and being aware of tendencies rather than getting caught up in the nuances of an offense. It's just because kids are kids and, and the game happens so fast that it's hard to stay with. We spend a lot of time, more time on our own team, you know, when we watch a tape. You know, for, for me, that's also my time to have time with my players. I want to know what you're thinking. like. Andy, how do you feel? Bri, you're, you're Bri, end the shot clock. What's your call? What do you want to go to? I love their input because I want to go to their strengths and what they're comfortable with. So we definitely have those conversations. So every two games, I'll sit with every player that played and I'll go over their clips and I've broken that all down. And we will go over an opponent every two days and say, all right, we just got done playing Dayton. These are the good, these are the bad. This is what we got to get better at. And then I meet with them individually. And it's time also to say, hey, how's school going? How was that test? Everything okay? I say like, hey, coach, instead of, you know, defending, you know, this way, can I try it this way because it's easier. And, you know, sometimes, or actually, most likely coach will say, you know, do whatever comes easier, but, like, make sure it's known. So make sure everybody knows so we're all on the same page. We're not allowed to scout in person. So the only time you're permitted is if you have your own Christmas, like we have our own Christmas tournament, and we go to our conference tournament, you know, you can do it. Well, the bigger schools can fly people out, and, you know, and, and it's, everybody will say it's, it's better to watch in person, but, you know, this way it puts everybody on kind of on equal footing. Every game it rotates for an assistant. They'll watch two or three tapes. I'm involved with every game, so I'll watch a, a minimum of two games, and I'm just a big believer that when things happen in the game, I need to be familiar with it, and it's very, very, very time-consuming. Then you're going to meet with your assistant, and you're going to go over the clips you have and the clips they have, and you're going to consolidate it, and the assistant's going to put that together in a database. Then you're going to write up the scouting report. Um, then you're going to go over that scouting report with your team and have a film session, and then you're going to remind them during practice, and then during our shoot-around, we'll cover everything that we're getting ready for for that particular opponent. After I go over the scouting report with them, they, we leave, the coaches leave the room, and they had to talk about what we just talked about and put that on paper just to see that they kind of got it. When we have our shoot-around, I'll quiz them and say, hey, Andy, you know, number number one, who's the point guard? And they say, number one, you know, score. Uh, half our shots are threes. You know, we got to keep in front, you know. And they're responsible for knowing that information. And once in a while, a kid freezes up, but pretty much they're right on target. And it might not be your position. I might call on you and say, all right, who's the center? What's the number? What do they do well? And every kid has to, every kid from 1 through 14 has to know every position. We definitely are given a lot of information, you know, during film and going over scout. But it's, it's easier as, you know, the days go on and we practice them. And then we're given the scout so we can look it over too and kind of go back and review it. Tell the kids all the time when we go into films, you got to trust in us. We've broken down a number of tapes. This is the best way to defend it. This is the shot we want to give up. If they make these shots consistently, they win. That's the odds we play. They're going to drive right. If we say they're going to step behind the screen, they're going to step behind the screen. Use Thursday to get ourselves better, 
And then Friday, Saturday, we'll be prepping for Dayton. Okay. Try to bring a group of, of guys as much as possible in along with you know some of our kids that are on our team um, to kind of simulate what we're going to see with our opponent. We'll have the, the coach in charge of that scout take them down and walk them through the offenses. And then we'll do before the scout gets there that day. We bring scout usually for an hour at the end of practice to go into scrimmage situation against what we will see with the opponents. But we spend the first hour kind of just breaking down some of the offenses and, and how we want to defend that particular opponent. But the scout does a great job of just kind of giving us bigger, stronger, faster. When we break down tape, the things that we particularly look for are sets. Like the, It's hard to get the calls because you can't really hear on the tape. So say, hey, that's their blue or that's their special. Uh, so we're looking for tendencies, you know, like a consistency with an offense. Like what do they do on scores? Are they in man or are they in 2-3? Who's their inbounder? You know, what's their sets out of bounds? Or do they have a particular play they run at the beginning of each half or the beginning of each quarter? Oh, that team's trapping to start the half. Dayton's tendency is very athletic. They can switch without losing anything on ball screens. Ball down the court very quickly and they, and they can, can hurt your transition. Second shots, they're extremely athletic on the board. So not only getting shot, second shots, you're going to be limited to one shot. And so therefore, it's really important that we execute and get good shots. A lot of ball screens, you know, a lot of reads for the point guard, which he does an outstanding job of, of reading. They can beat you off the dribble, but they also have got some great stanchial shooters, which is a very difficult thing to match up against. If you're playing a shooter, you know, you can close out aggressively and not worry about the drive, but when you're playing a score, somebody can do both, you really, your closeouts have to be on the money because if you close out too aggressively, they're just going to catch and go by. Uh, and if you don't close out enough, they're going to pull the three. So, you know, we're, we're showing that as well as we're showing their defensive tendencies. This is where I think we'll get shots. This is how yeah, they play the post. Hard. Some post, some teams double, they're some play straight up, screens. some play, you know, some will let you catch the ball, some will front. So we'll tell them what we think is going to be open. I'll be guarding 24. Um, I know she's a shooter, um, so, you know, I'm going to focus on pressuring her and making her uh, put the basketball on the floor and shooter, drop no to the basket because she's very comfortable shooting the, the pick and rolls for Dayton is really bringing their five out because that's when it puts pressure on the defense to make a decision. Because if you switch, you're going small on big. So you're either going to attack the big or you're going to attack the small. So they're trying to put you in a matchup situation in the early part of the shot clock, which puts a lot of pressure on the defense. So we obviously spent a lot of time on how to defend that. This is a good possession. Great job, Haley. They score that. That's a tough shot. That's very good defense. Part of the reason we do a lot of ball screens, I think that's one of the most difficult things to defend as a defensive coach. So when you're defending a pick and roll, you can show hard and kind of give that point guard two, two people at them, like the guard's getting over under the screen and the big is, is, is coming out at you aggressively. You can double that ball screen. A lot of times you'll double if you want a good, really good player to get rid of the ball. But if they're a really good passer, then you've now exposed yourself. Because what we do, anytime we face a ball screen, we zone up. So as soon as that, as soon as we have that ball screen, everybody needs to know that we're covering. You know, we're obviously putting some attention to that ball screen, but we're also putting attention to the next pass. You can sit under the screen and just let your guard get through. Okay, you can do, and this is something that's really come from the program. People call it either downing or icing, where you can say you're not going to let them use that screen. You're going to force them away from that screen, and then your big will take a different, you know, a different angle for defending. But you really have to be. You can't. I teach all so that we're prepared. A lot of te teams will also do what they call jam. Well, the post player will sit and jam the person on the screen so they can't roll. And that lets the guard get under that screen. So, like, for us, it depends on who we're playing as to how we'll defend it. You can switch it. You know, we do a lot of switching. It's three and four on that handle. That's got to be an aggressive switch. So we can get under it. But, guys, even if we get under it, and this person shadows. If she's caught, you're gonna to have to switch it if she's in attack mode, all right? So you can have them get under it, it's fine. If the post has got to recognize the beat, that was gonna be the offensive person in that drill, so you have to really work. So I have no problem getting under that handoff, but if you get beat on that handoff, so if that comes, and I'm, I'm Haley, so start up again, so here, give me that, uh, you can take that pass. So when I see this, and she's not under, but she's beat, and I see her coming, and I see, we get here, Okay. Again, which way is she going? That way. Okay. If she crosses over, she's going into traffic. So again, if she gets here, I'm going to get in front of her. She's going to get 
just pulls up. That's my job. My job is to make you take a pull-up shot. So if you see when she comes down, uh, I like what 21 did. That's exactly right. Now this kid's got to come up a little bit higher. Just as she gets caught right there, she's got to be ready to take that jumper. Whether they throw something different, you happens all the time. Like last year, we got ready for UMass, and they were every tape, every single tape from one to a ten was zone. And then we open up the game, and they play man. We spent the entire three days on zone, and so you just never know. So I'm a big believer that it's my responsibility as a coach to have our kids ready to see anything, whether it's a triangle and two, whether it's a full court press. You are prepared for anything. So. You know, you might see a triangle into maybe 0.2%. So you practice against it 0.2%. You know, whatever. If you see man 70%, you're probably practicing against man 70%. If teams that might play predominantly zone, then they're probably in their practices playing predominantly zone. So therefore, you know, man's a little bit different for them. So if we can get them out of the zone and make them play man, that's to our benefit. As we get to the end of the year, you tweak it and put a little, you know, an extra little, you know, twist in your offense, just something they might not have seen on tape, especially like sideline plays. A lot of people, you don't get a lot of sideline plays, so sometimes people aren't as prepared for them. But um, you definitely can do a couple little things here and there that are different. Teams that are at the end of the year, they're, they're playing just to, you know, to finish out the season or just to be kind of the underdog. They, they are the ones that probably will twist it and say, hey, let's go for it. This time of year, I think anything goes, but I think for the majority of coaches, they're probably sticking with what got them there. Playing on the road, obviously, I mean, as, as all coaches will say, anytime you can get a conference win on the road, it's extremely, extremely good. Because you're not only dealing with the opponent, you're also dealing with the crowd. Dayton is a great draw. It's senior day. And so they're, they're, that crowd is really going to be like their sixth man. You know, when you wake up at home, you're in your home surroundings. You're, 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 on your own, you're on your own court, you know, your own clocks, your own bench. And then when you go on the road... You go in, and the only ones that believe you can win are the 25 in your travel party. Everybody else there is against you. And so, therefore, it's, it's going against the odds from day one. And there's just, there's just something about, you know, f going to that different locker room or, you know, like you said, sitting on that different bench or, you know, going to your shoot-around that morning, and you're not getting the optimum time. So you've got to adjust to everything. So everything's an adjustment.